polling started this morning and it will continue till five or six in the evening and if there are voters in the booth then it can be further extended and as you know because of time difference between the east and west coast about three hours um, the polling has not even started yet in the, the west coast so the results are announced quite late but by this afternoon we would know how things are shaping up so far it seems as if republicans are set to win uh, in both uh, the house of representatives and in the senate uh, most uh, opinion surveys show that republicans will get actually more than what they need mm, out of the 435 they are expected to win about uh, 235 to 30 seats in the house which will, which will give them a very comfortable majority in the house and uh, in the senate although it is a little bit unclear uh, first of all there are 100 seats in the senate two from each of the 50 states and this year elections are being held on 30, 35 of these uh, Senate seats. So the Republicans need, I think, about three seats in the Senate to have a majority and the, and, and the Democrats need to retain the seats they have and plus get one more if they want a comfortable majority. Um, but it seems that uh, the Republicans may get a one vote majority in the Senate. Uh, and so if they do, then they will have both the House and the Senate under their control. Also, uh, elections uh, are being held for uh, governorship in 36 of the 50 states. So 36 states will be electing new governors and dozens of cities are also electing new mayors. There are several things. Let's start with uh, the governorship first. So whichever party controls the state, it actually gets to influence the result of the presidential elections because uh, the uh, delimitations of the constituencies are done by the governors, uh, the, 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 uh, the local administration, the state administration um, has a lot of say in the electoral process. The state government has a lot of power uh, in sort of doing things, uh, state and both city governments that influence the voters, such as sort of day-to-day -day work for the for the public, uh, education, health, all those things. They come under the local and the state government, and therefore, whichever party controls um, a state, uh, that party also can. Uh, influence the results of the federal elections uh, in, in, in its own state. So that is important in a way for the, not for this, for the next uh, presidential election that will be held in 2024. Now come to to, to Congress. As you know, the, U, the US Congress or the parliament is divided in between two chambers, like in Pakistan. In Pakistan, we have Senate and the National Assembly. Here, they have Senate and the House of Representatives. As I said earlier, the House of Representatives has 435 uh, members and the Senate has 100 members. And so in, in, in the Senate, in case of, if, if the seats are evenly divided like they are now, then the uh, vice president, who is also considered a member of this, uh, who's considered the uh, de facto president of the Senate, can also use his or her vote in, in case of a tie. In in the House, uh, also, of course, it, everything is decided by a simple majority. Having even even a two vote majority is good enough in the U.S. system because mm, a majority is a majority and it can take all the decisions. What decisions it can take? See, the way the U.S. system is designed, the president has the administrative powers, but uh, Congress has the purses. Congress controls the funds. So even for running the White House, White House itself, in, even, paying for, even for paying the White House staff, 
the president needs the approval of the two houses approval need congressional approval uh, even for like small things like this okay uh, all major financial allo allocations budget everything also need to be approved by congress so if the uh, congress is, if, if congress is controlled by an opponent party by an opposition party then it becomes very difficult for the president to do anything uh, uh, because it, it uh, the the, the, pro the, pro the proposed budget for any project will never be approved if it is seen to benefit uh, the party in power if the opposition is controlling the thing similarly all key appointments like that of the president that, that of a general that of a secretary that of a judge federal judge are all approved by the Senate and if the Senate is against you it is very difficult to get a candidate of your liking so what happens that's why if I mean as you know the elections are held in the uh, these are called the midterm election because these elections are held in the midpoint of a president president's four-year tenure President Biden was elected in 2020 he said he completed his second year and then he will have two more years to go in those two more years if Congress is with you, then you can make laws, you can do make appointments and do things that will or can influence the next presidential elections. You can also fulfill your election promises and do other things like this President President Biden plans to do because the first two years, you know, in the first year is spent in trying to to learn the ropes. You try to test your strengths and your weaknesses and you try to decide what you can cannot do. The second year, you start trying to implement those plans and those projects. It is in the third and fourth year that you actually get to implement them and then hope to produce results that will favor your party in the next election. But if, if you don't have control over Congress, then you cannot do anything. And that is why a president without control over Congress is, is called a lame duck, duck president in the United States. So if President Biden loses these midterm, I mean, his party loses these mis midterm elections, Biden will still remain the president. He will still complete his four year tenure, but he will not be able to do much. Well, I mean, whether Pakistan is closely linked to America anymore or not, America as a superpower power has influence around the globe and particularly in our region, because uh, South, we are, uh, Pakistan is a country which uh, sort of has borders with three key regions of the world. South, South Asia, because it itself is a part of South Asia. Then Central Asia, which is Afghanistan and beyond. And the Middle East, which is Iran and beyond. Then we have borders with some very important countries that no superpower in the world, no, no, no superpower would ever like to leave, um, I mean, would like not to have influence in that region. Uh, so we have borders with China. Of course, uh, America as a superpower is concerned about what China does or does not do. China is the second strongest power financially and now militarily too. So the, obviously Americans watch everything that is happening in and around China. So that is why Pakistan is important. Then we have borders with Afghanistan, a country where the 9-11 attacks were planned and executed from. Then Pakistan has borders with Iran. The, the, uh, the United States has a lot of concern about. And then we have borders with India, which is now a close American allies. And besides everything else, both India and Pakistan have nuclear weapons. And trouble in that region means that any conflict between India and Pakistan, if left uncontrolled, could go nuclear. And therefore, all American administrations would like to have, and they do retain some influence in that region, including in Pakistan. The results of these elections will not have much of an impact on Washington's policies towards uh, that region. Uh, because whosoever is, is in power in Washington will remain concerned about China and its growing influence, it would like to contain China's uh, influence and therefore uh, the first country that it would like to have close relations with 
which whichever party is in power in Washington, it would like to maintain close relations with India because India is a large country. India borders China. India has disputes with China. India wants to contain China as does Washington. So uh, whether it is a, a, a Republican administration or Republican controlled Congress or it is a Democratic administration, Democratic controlled Congress, U.S. relations with India will remain strong in the uh, sort of in, 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 in uh, the near future. Uh, India, but Pakistan being uh, also an strategically important country, uh, we also remain remain important. Pakistan cannot replace India. But Pakistan is a country that cannot be, be ignored. It's a country of 220 million people it, with a large diaspora. It is a country with nuclear weapons. It is a country with a large educated middle class. And therefore, I think whosoever is in power in Washington would like to maintain some sort of relation with Pakistan it will not be like what we used to have during the war against terror or during the Afghan war, but we will, I think, continue to have friendly relations with Washington.